I'd like to share with you a quote. And I believe this quote is so important that we'll read it again tomorrow morning. But uh, this is a quote from Benjamin Franklin. There are two ways of being happy. We may either diminish our wants or augment our means. Either will do. The result is the same. And it is for each person to decide for themselves and do that which happens to be the easiest. If you're idle or sick or poor, however hard it may be to diminish you want, your wants, it will be harder to augment your means. If you're active and prosperous or young or in good health, it may be easier for you to augment your means than to diminish your wants. But if you're wise, you will do both at the same time, young or old, rich or poor, sick or well. And if you are very wise, you will do both in such a way as to augment the general happiness of society. Don't you love that? Ben. So all you're going to do tonight on Lesson 23 is just list 10 projects, activities, work that you could do in the coming year that would generate income for you. Don't worry about if it's aligned with your passions or not. Uh, hopefully it uses some skill that you have. But just make a list of, of 10 things. Hopefully they're things that you would enjoy doing. But 10 things that you can think of that could generate income for you over the coming year. And there's nothing more. Don't go, don't go to the next page. We'll do that tomorrow. But just make the list. Is that clear? Yes. All right. Okay, good. We framed this exercise in the context of what projects could you do to make money. And uh, we did that because money is a representation of value. But the exercise is really about what projects can you do that will create value for others. In other words, what are the ways that you can serve and provide a value for others and ideally that they will pay for? Does that make sense? Because money is simply a measurement of value. As I said, we talked about yesterday, money is simply a way of assessing to what, does, to what extent am I providing value to others in a way that they find meaningful, right? Because you can provide value to others, they may not find it meaningful at all, and they wouldn't be willing to pay anything for it. Even with a nonprofit organization, for example, a charitable activity, if the value that's being provided is really something of great value, then donors are going to be willing to donate to support that activity. Isn't that true? Yeah. Mother Teresa took a vow of poverty. And yes, during her lifetime, she raised millions and millions and millions of dollars for her projects because people saw those as her projects as being valuable. So this really, whether you think of it in terms of what will make me the most money or not, I think it's valuable to use that because it's a good measurement of to what extent, not only am I providing value, but to what extent am I providing value in a way that others find valuable. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. you can provide lots of value, but it's value that someone else doesn't really could care less about, <laughs> you know? But if you're, five, if you're providing value that meets a need that someone has, and that need is significant, then would you all agree that they'll be willing to pay for it? And either they'll pay themselves or a donor would be willing to pay to be able to make that value available to them. Does that make sense? Okay, so take a minute now and rate your top, your top three projects on a scale of zero to 10. Zero means it would generate no income for you in the coming year. 10 means it would generate lots of income for you, the, as the most amount. And in between is somewhere in between. And you're just making a subjective guess here, okay? I, I get that you probably don't know how much income a given project might generate. So based upon what you know about yourself and about the market or the people that you'd be serving, make an educated guess. So anybody ha uh, for anyone, are your top three projects zeros, ones, or twos? Or threes? Okay, so what that means is that you need to add to this list a project that may not be as aligned with your passions, but which will generate more income for you. 
unless you don't need income, okay? If you don't need income, I mean, some people may be in the situation that you have savings or you have investments or whatever, so you don't need the income immediately. If that's your situation, then you don't need to just f do the projects that you've done. But if you have projects that are not going to generate income and it's necessary or important for you to generate income in the coming year, then you need to look at the other projects on your list and you can go through and do the same exercise on your own, ra rate all of the projects in terms of how much income could they, they uh, generate, and then take one of the projects that you can see that would generate the highest income, add it to the ones that won't generate any, so that you're generating income as you're working on your passion projects. Make sense? Everybody with me? Okay. And, uh, and, and when, if you should ha have the experience that you look at your projects and none of your 10 projects will generate any income and you need income, then what I would recommend then is to look at what you've done in the past that has allowed you to make income and or what are your skills and talents as opposed to your passions that you could be hired to, for those skills or talents in some way, shape, or form and then add that to your project list, your, your top three project list. Because unless you don't need income, even as you're following your passions, you need, part of getting to living your passionate life is to have the income, have the, the sustenance to be able to move closer and closer in the direction of living your passions fully. Does that make sense? Everybody with me? I couldn't hear you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Michelle. Oh, talking stick. Right here. James. James oh, has sorry. this old habit of calling it a microphone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't have to stress out about my list. If I have like a real job that is generating income, That's I right. can pick a bunch of, they could generate nothing or they could generate like a ton of money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. The, the key thing here is to remember what Janet said yesterday, you know, there may be a few people in the world, like our dear Janet, who can jump off a cliff, look for the parachute on the way down, and it shows up, you know? <laughs> for most of us, it's not a good idea to count on that, you know? It's a good idea to, to just have some level of safety so that you're not worried and anxious and, and completely going out of your mind about how am I going to pay the bills, while you're, because that's not going to help you live your passions, is it? Everyone say no, 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 no right? So the next, uh, the next step is on the second page of lesson 23. So this is page 72. I'd like you to take just a moment right now. Uh, don't take the time to write the project. You have the project on the other page. Just make a guess, an estimate of the amount of income you intend to make from each of those projects during the coming year. Okay, this is an intention statement. And, it, and your intention statement should be something that you feel is believable. What's the word? Believable. But stretches a little beyond yeah. what might be automatic. Does that make sense? So if you feel like, oh, I, I could make $10,000 with this, no problem in the coming year, then maybe you set your intention for 15000 oh. That makes sense? No. So, or 12000 Take whatever you think, I could definitely make this amount of money, stretch it just a little. Not a lot, just a little. Just, so 10000 12000 so just take one minute now for each of your top three. Make uh, your intention for the income that, you, that each will bring to you. These are your intentions. What's the word? Intention. Your financial intentions. Say it with me. Financial, financial intentions. intentions for these projects, okay? And, and if you need to, you know, if you have an existing job, or if you need to have a job that may not be one of your passion projects, 
then add it. Okay, add the income on that page. Add the income from that so that you can do your, your total projected increase in monthly income or you can do annual income, doesn't matter. But you're going to do a total of how much are you going to uh, increase your income. Actually, if you have an existing job, this is about how much you would increase your income from what it is right now through these projects. Okay. The next page, this is 73 in this workbook. Next page, you're going to just, you, you took your, you made a list of all your expenses last night, right? So you made a list of all your expenses in the previous lesson. You're just going to take a moment now, and we're just going to take one minute to do this. But just look at those. You can look at the, what you did last night and note where do you think you could reduce any of these expenses and by how much. Okay? And this is monthly expenses. Unless you, if you use annual expenses, then stick with annual. If you use monthly expenses, stick with monthly. We asked you to do monthly last night, so this, I would say do this monthly. And just, just make a note of any of these expenses that you could reduce, okay? That you could reduce the expense uh, and, that, and it feels comfortable to you. No, not like you're going, oh, I'm, that's going to be awful. And when you've got that number, what you're going to do then is take your projected increase in your monthly income, okay? So uh, I gave us, us the wrong, you don't want to include your existing job, okay? So take your, your total, the, how much you're going to increase your monthly income from what it is right now and how much you're going to reduce your expenses and you're going to calculate a number. Your, your increase in income plus your decrease in expenses will give you a total projected surplus. Projected increase in your surplus. So how many of you would like to learn a fun financial ritual? Yes. Yes. Fun financial rituals are good, aren't they? This is one that we learned from T. Harv Eker, who you may have heard of. Harv uh, teaches a, a course called The Millionaire Mind. Ma what is it? Secrets of His book is called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And, uh, and he talks in there about whatever he calls it. We call it the jar ritual. And it's a way of allocating your income to ensure that you are applying money to the things that you may need in the future as well as today. Okay? And what I have done, this is, I think, personally, this is a really great ritual with kids as well as with adults, that uh, my five-year-old, sorry, six-year-old, she's six years old, uh, she gets uh, uh, paid every week. She gets five euros every week because we live in Germany for her contribution to the family. And she, we have created a written agreement between her and, and us. <laughs> and she signed that agreement. She made an X because she doesn't know how to sign her name yet. But, uh, but we read over the agreement and she agreed that she would do certain tasks to contribute to the family and that she would be helpful when she when her mom asked her to help with other things and she's been outstanding i have to tell you she does her her tasks every week and then she gets paid five euros a week for doing that task and what what she's learned to do is we have we have actually seven jars and and what I'm recommending, uh, what the part of the jar ritual, if you will, for all of you, it would be rather than jars. You could use jars, but you may want to use bank accounts. Okay? And what she does is 50% of the money that she goes, that she gets, she puts into her jar. She has all her jars lined up on the, on the, on the shelf. And she has a big jar for necessities. 50% goes into necessities. Every Saturday we sit together when I'm home and her mom does it when I'm not. The, and, she, and each jar has in it a little accounting sheet. So it, and the accounting sheet shows what date did she receive the money, where, uh, where did it come from, how much money did she receive, how much money is she depositing, 
and, or, and if she was taking money out, how much she, money she took out, and then what is the balance in her jar. This is the same thing you would do with your bank account, right? Then she has these other jars, and if you would read them to me, they are on, I believe, page 74, or the next page. You've got it. So, yeah, would you read it to me? Fun. So one jar is for fun. Do you think it's important to allocate some money that you can just play with and celebrate the fact that you're making some money? What do you think? Everybody say yes. Okay, next. Investment. Okay, so this one we call financial freedom. And this is, this is money that is going to be used to make more money, right? So you're going to use that money to make more money. Okay, next one. Education. Okay, so then we have education. And do you think that it's important? How many of you have realized that continuing to learn throughout your life is pretty essential to being able to survive and thrive in today's world? Yes. 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 So by allocating money for education, then when you want to take a course, you want to go to Byron Katie's school, you want to do something that's going to be, help you enrich you, then you have an education fund. Okay? Large purchases. Okay. What would be examples of large purchases? A new car, a new, car, a new house, furniture. furniture, refrigerator, right? Appliances. So a large, and, and does it make sense that it, it would probably be in your financial interest to have the money and be able to buy it in cash rather than borrowing the money and paying interest, if possible? Yeah, does it make sense? Okay, and then what's the next one? Emergency. Ah, yes, emergencies. <laughs> so, what would emergencies be for? Does ever anything ever come up unexpectedly? <laughs> Almost always. Yeah. Okay, and then what's the last? Donations. That's it. Why would we want to allocate money for donations? I know it's obvious, perhaps, but why would we put money to give away? The more you give, the more you receive. The more you give, the more you receive. And, and isn't, isn't helping others, you know, being able to help others who are not able to help themselves, isn't that part of celebrating life? Isn't that what makes making money worthwhile and, and fun and delightful, right? So, so the... What we do with my daughter, so we don't actually, she doesn't have an emergency fund, but we put 10% in all except emergencies. So we put 10% in fund, 10% of financial freedom, 10% education, 10% large purchase, 10% in donations. I take care, for her, I take care of the emergency fund. <laughs> but, um, so what I'd like you to do right now is to just go through, you know, we may not all be in a position to put 50% of our income aside, you know, to, to use only 50% of our income for our necessities. But there's a great story you'll read in this book that I'll share with you briefly, that uh, this is the story of Michelle, who came and met Harvecker, and uh, when she came to, to one of his courses, she was deeply in debt. Uh, she had grown up with parents who were, she felt, really stingy. You know, they were really careful with their money and it drove her nuts. And so when she became an adult, she said, I'm not going to be like that. And when she wanted clothes, she went out and bought them. And when she wanted a car, she went out and bought it. And she got deeper and deeper in debt. And, and then she didn't have money to pay her, her credit cards. And so she borrowed from her parents, those stingy parents, until she was, she had like she owed them like twenty eight thousand dollars on top of all the money that she owed for her car and for the credit cards and everything else, and she was pretty close to having to declare bankruptcy, and uh, and she came to the to Harv's course and she heard about this whole strategy, and she thought, well, that makes sense, but I can't put ten percent of my income. I can just barely get by as it is, so she said. 
I'm going to just put a dollar in each of those other categories. And I think I can handle a dollar, right? And so that's what she did. She started putting a dollar from her income in each category every month. And she started getting, creating that ritual, right? Rep that repetitive practice. So she got used to it. And then she started, after a few months, she thought, well, I'm not going to get very far with just putting a dollar away every month. So why don't I see if I can start with a dollar and double it every month? Let me see how long I can do that. So that's what she did. She started doubling the amount she put in each of the other categories. And she started with a dollar, next month was two dollars, the next month was four dollars for each category, next eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred and twenty-eight, two hundred and what is it? Ninety-six, fifty-six, two hundred and fifty-six, four hundred, five hundred and twelve, you know? And and so you can see that by the time you get I don't know how many iterate how many things we went through, but maybe after six, seven, eight months, she had to put $500 away in each of those categories. Well, now that's pretty significant, right? And what she said it did is it forced her to start thinking about other ways she could make money. How else can I increase my income because I'm committed to this practice, this ritual that I've created for myself. And so she started finding new ways of generating income, new ways of of using her genius and her skills. And until today, she owns a ton of rental properties. She doesn't work at all anymore. She actually travels the world helping people learn this kind of stuff. And, uh, and it all came from implementing this very simple ritual in her life. So I encourage you to not necessarily start with 10% in every category if that's not possible for you. If it is possible for you, it's a really good practice. Right? But this is what we do with my daughter, and this is what we started doing with our fi family finances, and it's, it's really, really powerful. So. All right. So you can fill in that. Uh, that's on page 75 in your workbooks. And I, but right now, I'd like to go through these principles of creating financial abundance and, and give you, fill in the blanks for you, okay? So money comes to you as the result of providing what to others? Value, that's right. Money comes to you as the result of providing value to others. Value is the result of combining your what, your what, and your what. What do you think? To serve others. Skills. Skills. Talents. talents yeah. time. And passions. Very good. So combining your skills, talents, and passions, or your passion, skills, and talents to serve others. The biggest obstacle to creating financial abundance is your own beliefs or mind, either one. Absolutely. The key to creating successful results is to undo the non-useful behaviors from the past and let go of the what that surrounds them. So beliefs is close. The, w the word we'll put in there is story. As, as Katie says, who would you be without your story? Yeah? The key to creating successful results is to undo the non-useful behaviors from the past and let go of the story that surrounds them. Number five, this quote from the Bible is a good principle to remember. Ask and it will be given to you. Or unto you, depending upon your translation. A financial statement is a way, I would say, actually it should say, a financial statement is a powerful way <laughs> to gain what? What was, it, what was it over here first? Who said? Clarity. Clarity, Did you say I heard clarity? it. Yeah. Someone said clarity. But clarity is the word. Financial, so why would a financial statement be a way of gaining clarity? Just curious. You know where you are. You know where you are, right. You can see. So, yeah, exactly. It, it tells you that you're either doing really well and you should keep doing what you're doing, or you're not doing so well and you may need to make some adjustments to the current plans and activities and strategies that you're using, right? Okay. A wise person will both augment their what? Income. Okay. Or Benjamin Franklin said their means, but income is fine. 
and decrease their or their wants, as Benjamin Franklin said, in a way that benefits society. That's right. Yeah, a wise person will both augment their means or their income and decrease their wants or expenses in a way that benefits society. It's very important to what when you receive money? Celebrate. Celebrate. Express your gratitude also, yes. Celebrate. Well, the amount... <laughs> Whether the amounts are large or small, always divide your money into the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories. How many of you feel that you're beginning to get a little bit more clarity about your direction? Just maybe not completely there, but starting to move in that direction. How many feel that? Yeah? Good. So we're going to keep moving in that direction. <laughs> 